and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be revisiting a brand that I reviewed about a year ago and that is the Amica Curl Core. So these products I thought were really good quality products. However, the gel just didn't have the type of hold that I'm looking for. It just didn't get me through a full three days like I typically like. However, that doesn't mean that they're bad products. They're really good products. And today I thought I would revisit these and show you how to kind of work with products that are actually really good quality products. However, they just didn't work quite like you would like them to. And sometimes you can work with them and find ways to get them to work how you want them to work without having to throw them away or give them away and lose your money. And if you're new here, my name is Michelle. I'm a licensed hairstylist with over 20 years of experience. And on this channel, I use those 20 years of experience to help you have healthy, happy hair. And let's get started. I already washed my hair today and it was feeling like it could use a good clarifier. So I did use my Malibu C Undo Goo and then I followed it up with my Weedad ultra nourishing, really super long name that I'll put up here somewhere because I can never remember it. But I usually use a deep conditioner after I clarify because I feel like my hair needs to have some of that moisture and protein restored to it. And I use the Wee Dot one because it has a good amount of both and my hair always feels nicely balanced after I use both the clarifier and then follow it with that deep conditioner. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the Curl Conditioning Oil and Cream as my weave-in. And my reasoning is because both of these products, both of the Amica Curl Core products have a fair amount of protein in them. So I wanna make sure that I'm starting off with a decent amount of moisture. And that's all that this is. There's no protein in here. And this happens to be one of my favorite leave-in conditioners, especially for when all I want is moisture because the styling products I'm using are containing a decent amount of protein. So I'll be using this and I start off with that amount that I showed you and I put it in on the one side, use roughly the same amount on the other side. My hair is getting pretty long so I'm having to adjust and using a lot more than what I typically do. And once that's applied, I go ahead and grab my brush and then I just quickly brush through to make sure that it is evenly distributed throughout my hair. So today's video is gonna actually showcase quite a few different products layered on top of each other, which is typically how I do my hair. I like to layer multiple different products so that I can get the benefits from each of those products layered on top of each other rather than trying to use large quantities of one or two products and expecting those couple of products or one product to do everything that I need it to do. It usually doesn't work that way for me, so I tend to layer quite a few and uh, use multiple different products in order to achieve the look that I'm going for. The only thing to consider when you're doing that is reducing the amount of product that you put in your hair because you are putting multiple different products, so you just don't want to use a ton of each of them. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is going to be the Bouncy Strength Volume Foam. I'm only gonna put this up at my roots because my hair has gotten really long. If you've seen a couple of my past videos, I've been complaining about this for a little while now. I do cut my own hair and it's kind of a pain in the butt, so I tend to procrastinate it when I need it uh, because I just, it's, I just don't wanna do it. So I am gonna put this foam in up at my roots just to kind of help with some lift and volume up there because I'm losing that as my hair gets longer. I'm also losing some root curl or at least for the roots that actually do curl because not all of my hair curls right down to the roots, only some of it does and some of it does not. It's just the way that it goes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that up there. It was just a small amount. I only put it up at the top just to kind of help me get a little bit more lift and volume so that my roots are not stuck to my head and I'm not walking around with a flat head. Also in this video, I'm going to stick with my normal brush styling technique. It's just my favorite way of getting definition and clumping in my hair. However, in future videos, I am going to be demonstrating different styling techniques and I will probably even be doing a video where I use the same products but different styling techniques on two different wash days and then just showing you what each looks like. 
Um, that one's going to take a little bit longer for me to put together, but it is something that I want to show you that sometimes styling technique makes all the difference. This is a technique that I find works really well most of the time with pretty much every product that I use. However, you might find that sometimes with different products, you might have to change up how you apply those products. But I'm going to go ahead and put this cream in the way that I normally do. And I'm going to start off with about that much. And then I'm just going to brush through just to evenly distribute it from roots to ends. And then I'm just going to go through in small sections and brush from roots to ends just to smooth everything out. And then I go up from underneath and I turn it to get some tension and go under. And then that way my hair can curl in whichever direction that it needs to curl in rather than me bringing it forward or backwards and trying to force it to curl in a different direction. I'm going to do the same thing on this side and I do this for this section, then I do the middle section and I do the top section and as I'm brushing through I'm brushing it out at a 90 degree angle from my scalp at all times. This helps keep it from being stuck to my scalp and keeping me from getting hair that is flat to my head helps give it a little bit of lift and volume. I'm just going to continue that all the way through my head and when I get to the top, I lift it straight up. And then once I've done that, this is the part that I probably don't show a whole lot, is I usually give it a little bit of a scrunch and not even a very aggressive one. I don't do a ton of scrunching because I don't uh, like the frizz that it causes. However, if you feel you need to do a lot more scrunching, one of the things that you can do that can help keep it from causing frizz is when your hair is wet, make sure your hands are nice and wet or have some product on them and be scrunching that way because if your hands are dry and your hair is wet, the hair will stick to your dry hands and you'll cause frizz. Um, and then be careful when you're scrunching it and don't go in very aggressively, kind of lift up and squeeze as opposed to being really fast and aggressive about it. So after giving that little bit of a scrunch, then I just move on to the other section. So I'm gonna continue that and then I'll be back and I'll show you the rest of the process. And you gotta love long hair for making your shirt just like completely soaking wet. Anyway, I'll be back. Now that we have the curl cream all applied and we're ready to put gel, everything is looking good so far. As you can see, I've got some nicely defined and clumped curls going on and no frizz so far. So that's a really good start. And I'm going to go ahead and put the gel in the way that I typically do. And this is a little bit thicker than what I typically like. Although as you can see, it kind of runs around my hands. So it has just enough of a little bit of a runniness to it that it is easy enough to distribute by just kind of doing it the way that I typically do, which is glazing over and gently kind of scrunching it in from the bottom or doing praying hands, however you want to call it, but I gently go over it and I also hit the top of my hair so that it can help keep down some of that frizz up there and also to lock in the definition and clumping that I worked so hard to put in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now, if this was a gel that was so thick that it's really hard to distribute, the way that I would change that up is I would either mix it in my hands with some water to kind of dilute it a little bit to get it to go through, or in the case of the Curlsmith In Shower Style Fixer, I actually put that in first and then I define my hair with the In Shower Style Fixer in it. Uh, typically, I don't define my hair with gel in it, but I find that because of the thickness and the hold factor and everything else, just basically the way that the In Shower Style Fixer is, that it works better for me to do it that way than my usual way. And that is exactly what I'm talking about with adjusting how you work with your products to see if maybe applying it a completely different way might be all it takes for it to work for you. 
Now, there are of course times where products are just not gonna work for you at all. They may contain ingredients that typically are problematic for your hair, and some of those ingredients would be glycerin or aloe, or another one is coconut oil. So a lot of times if products contain those and those generally don't work for your hair, there usually isn't a whole lot that you can do to change that. But with some other products, sometimes just changing your styling techniques or maybe pairing it with different products might help with whatever it is that you're struggling with with that particular product. And now since this was a very light hold gel and its purpose is to be light and fluffy and bouncy and not really have a hard hold or develop a really hard cast or anything like that. So I am gonna put another product in it in order to increase its hold. And if I were going for another gel, what I would probably do is the Biolage Styling Gel A because it is my favorite. I've been using this on and off for almost 30 years. It's a great gel, so if I have lighter weight gels and I wanna put another one on top of it for a little extra hold, this is usually the one that I go for. I just find that even though it creates a cast, I still wind up with really nice, light, bouncy, fluffy curls, but they last a lot longer. So that would be an option. However, I really want to use a mousse today in part because I really want to play up the lighter weight nature of these products and the little bit of lift and bounce that I can get out of them. And so I'm gonna go with a mousse and I want a little bit more volume as well, just because as I keep complaining, my hair has gotten a lot longer when my hair gets really long or anybody's hair gets really long, it does weigh it down, but my hair is heavy by nature. So it just, it really gets, starts getting really heavy and weighed down. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a mousse and I'm gonna use this Unite Elevate mousse because it has a decent hold. It had, it gave me some great volume. So, and I haven't used it in a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this in. I'm not gonna put a ton of this in because I don't want it to get too producty or anything like that. And I will be following this up with hairspray just before I diffuse because I want to get the maximum amount of hold and longevity out of all of these products. And hairspray just does that for me. It's not something I do when I review products because it'll skew the review. However, when I do my hair otherwise for not a review, I do use hairspray because I don't like refreshing my hair and I never have to refresh when I use hairspray. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this, give it a good shake. And now this is a denser mousse. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on and I remember from the first time that I used this that in some spots where I used a little bit too much, it did kind of feel a little bit kind of producty and gross. So I'm gonna make sure not to do that because this is definitely a very concentrated mousse. So I don't need to go too crazy with the amount that I'm using. The only thing I don't like about this mousse is that it's got kind of a funky smell. And it's not like a bad one, but it just, it doesn't smell good either. So, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the other side, smoothing it over to kind of distribute and then scrunching in what's left on my hands. That is the mousse applied. I like to put mousse in at the end because I find just the motion of scrunching it into my hair really helps to further clump and define my hair. And then now for the final step, I am going to be spraying in a lot of hairspray and I realize this seems like a lot and this might be a little bit much for some people, but I don't do any refreshing when I do all of this. So for me, this actually saves time because the next few days, I'll take my bonnet off, I'll shake my hair out, and it'll look just fine. It'll last really well. And it's worth it to me to put in this time and effort on my wash day, so then that way for the next few days, I really don't have to put any sort of time and effort into my hair. I don't have to add any extra product when I'm refreshing. So everything that I'm doing now seems like a lot, but when you take into consideration that I never have to do anything again until my next wash day, it's worth it for me 
to do all of this up front. So now I'm just gonna flip my head upside down and I'm gonna spray upside down. I did go upside down with a small amount of gel and a small amount of mousse as well. I just did the same thing with my head upside down. Now I'm gonna tip my head upside down, spray around, and then I'm gonna go directly into diffusing my hair and then I'll be back to show you the results. Now that my hair is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of my Verb Ghost Oil, but before that, I'll just give you a little bit of a close up and show you that I still have minimal to no frizz going on and nice to find curls and I don't have any sort of a cast because the gel doesn't give me a cast, the mousse that I use doesn't give me a cast and even though I put hairspray in over the top of it, it didn't give me a cast, I didn't use a lot of it so I have no cast but I will be still putting this in just to seal everything in and so that I can go through and scrunch and fluff. Here we are scrunched and fluffed and I've got some nice volume. I still have no frizz or minimal frizz. I have maybe a little bit, nothing too bad, especially considering I was giving my hair a good shake to kind of get a little bit of lift and some volume. And I've got some nice root lift thanks to putting the foam in at my roots and I have, like I said, some really great definition and nice, light, fluffy, bouncy curls. My hair feels virtually weightless. So this was definitely a really good combination. And it might seem, like I said earlier, like a lot to try to make one product work. Why not just use a different gel or whatever, which yes, I could. And I have plenty of gels that I don't have to put the mousse in after and I maybe don't even need to use the hairspray. However, uh, in one of my recent videos where I explained how to get lighter, bouncier, tighter curls, and I'll put a card up here so you can check that out, I talked about liking lighter weight gels for the reason of getting my curls to kind of spring up a little bit more and to be able to curl to their fullest potential. As much as I really love hard hold gels with a really good strong cast, they do tend to set while my hair is still really being weighed down by the water that's in it and by itself. So it just sets while it's still elongated and stretched out before it has a chance to really perk up and curl up and turn into the curls that they're meant to be. So I do like lighter weight gels for that nice lighter bouncier kind of effect. And I do have a diffusing technique that does kind of help counteract gravity regardless of which type of gel I'm using. But I do like to sometimes use lighter weight gels to get the nice lighter curled up bouncier curls rather than using a harder gel. I will still use both a firm hold gel and the lighter weight gels, but it all kind of comes down to whatever look I'm going for and what it is that I'm looking for. And so that's one of the reasons for using this gel is it does allow my hair to curl up to its fullest potential, but because it doesn't have a very strong hold, it's not going to get me several days down the road. Whereas adding the mousse and the hairspray is definitely going to do both because I do know from using this mousse before that it does have really good hold and it does stay for a couple of days. And with the hairspray added to it, that's really going to help. So I'm not gonna have to refresh my hair for the next few days. And basically by the time I'm gonna have to do anything to my hair, it'll either be wash day or if I decide to push out wash day, then I can just put it half up or all up or whatever and not have to mess with it. And the other thing that using the multiple products like this does is that it does help give that gel, the lighter weight gel, a little bit more longevity, but it also cuts down on the amount of mousse that I use because I do know from using that mousse before that it can get a little bit producty if you use too much. So I didn't have to use as much mousse in order to be able to get more hold out of it, but it did give me some nice volume. So I was able to get the volume from the mousse and the extra added hold without it feeling really producty. And then on top of it all, like I said, with the hairspray, hairspray just really helps to lock everything in place and help seal it and keep it going for multiple days 
better than almost any other product can. And also it's a good way for me to be able to use both the mousse and the gel and be able to use them up rather than having to throw them away or give them away because I don't like having to have that producty feel when I use enough of the mousse when I'm just using it on top of a curl cream and I don't like that I don't get enough hold just using the gel. This way I can use both products together and I can have everything that I'm looking for and not have to waste any of my money. So that is another reason there as well. So that is going to conclude this video for the day. Hopefully you found it helpful and maybe found some tips for trying to make products that initially don't work for you work for you by trying it out with different things. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.